Oh, hi there. Good evening. Um, I'm going to share it with you a, another one of my posts. Uh, I'm hoping perhaps that if you take anything away from my posts, it gives you pause to think about things. Now, I'd like to talk a bit, obviously, about what's going on in the country, uh, starting with uh, Keir Starmer. Okay, now, Keir Starmer has sent a message to the British people. That message is very loud and clear. Stay in your lane. Put up and shut up. Stay in your lane. Obey. You will obey. Stay in your lane. Put up and shut up. That's fine. That's fine. You know, um, also don't spread lies. Yeah, don't deal in lies, as the poem goes. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on online media about spreading lies. What is curious is, though, but the mainstream media continue to spread two particular lies. One, that the EDL is causing a lot of this stuff. And two, everybody who dissents and disagrees with the government policy of increased immigration is far right. I think that's one of the things what's really, really beginning to piss people off. Being mislabeled. Christ, you know, nowadays, if you misgender somebody, people go off here, there and everywhere. But if you mislabel someone on the political level, no problem at all. It is a problem. Because a lot of good people have got concerns about what's been happening in the country. And it's not just simply a case that, unfortunately, the attacker, the killer, the murderer of those three girls and the people who were in hospital with those bad mutilated stab wounds, okay? It's not just a case of, you know, well, you know, uh, the person wasn't uh, from uh, an Islamic-type country or something like that. Uh, he was Welsh, you know? I dare say he spoke for sort of Gaelic or whatever. Yeah. Um, no, that's not that's not that. How can I say this? If you think back to 2011 with the Mark Duggan riots, yeah, that Mark Duggan riots, it came in a situation where, to be honest, there wasn't a lot of stuff within the back community. Yeah, there was stop and search, but it was nowhere near as bad as what it was in the early 80s. Yeah, that Mark Duggan thing ignited because there was a bit of an injustice. Yeah, we were misled. And we were lied to about the Mark Duggan thing, if you can remember. And the so-called lots of, uh, you know, first of all, that he shot a police officer. Uh, then there was a gun, but then there wasn't a gun. Yeah. And then after years of careful analysis, it looked like the police probably planted something. Yeah. And the truth didn't come out because it was just hidden and buried under reports and investigations and committees and whatever. Yeah. But Mark... Duggan at that time was assassinated by the police. Yeah, that was a lie. What they spread about him uh, having a, a, a gun and using that gun, right? But those riots happened and were fueled predominantly a about the sense of outrage, which was a general sense of outrage, but the advent and nascent use of the social media. OK, that's what was causing it up and down the country. And I think that, in all honesty, apart from you know, a lot of the arrests which Keir Starmer was involved in, uh, I believe, uh, the weather saved the day in regards to um, how to handle it. But I do remember at that time there was general concern as to what to do. And like where we are today, people were talking about whether or not we ought to bring the army in. Yeah. And it was really one of those sort of precipitant moments where anything could happen. It could go either way, but it sort of calmed down. And I think it calmed down because the fuel of it wasn't that great. This is different. This is different. It's different because the vast majority of the British people had voted. Over 50% had voted for Brexit. They had voted for Brexit based predominantly on immigration and the idea of controlling the borders okay and 
And they felt betrayed because even though they had this referendum, this whole new exciting idea that you get some participation in political democracy. Wow, you know, rather than once every five years, okay. It didn't go the way they wanted it to go because even though they felt that they won that referendum, yeah, it's you could see that the political party and parties were just trying to ignore it and just carry on as per normal. And the truth be told that the thing what they voted against actually became more and there was an increase in immigration. And so people felt were this betrayed. They felt betrayed. So as the news were coming out of each particular atrocity, which is always or generally seem to be uh, gaslit by the press, that it's never a terrorist as such, it's always someone with mental health problems, unless, of course, it's a white person who puts maybe uh, a bacon sandwich on a mosque, then it's like far-right political sort of contrived activity. But if you stab and kill somebody, then... You know, you still have to kill a lieutenant colonel, perhaps, or uh, I believe some uh, lady in uh, Ipswich was uh, uh, killed or stabbed uh, recently over the weekend. But I'm, I'm trying hard to get the news from that. Please, someone, if you know anything about it, put things in the comments below, OK? Because the news aren't talking much about it. So it's about the deaths of people, yeah, the killings of people. Not throwing stones at a mosque, maybe throwing up in ties, the actual murder and killings of people. That is what people are concerned about. And that's what I think people are concerned that they don't have a voice about. Yeah, that this is why they're sort of protesting. And that is why it's different than the Mark Duggan thing. Because this is over years, you know, it's uh I'm talking about it's eight years now since that referendum. So time goes by very, very quickly, very quickly indeed. But it's eight years since that referendum. And that, that the issue is still ongoing. So it's been up. And I don't, you know, unfortunately, with Keir Starmer, I don't know, he's, on some, he's so very far removed. And I've said before that as long as they keep saying the word far right, people know that the politicians aren't listening to them. And when I look at the television and I see the, you know, like I see Channel 4 and they had you know, people there speaking about the situation. There was uh, two Asian people and a black lady there talking about it. And I'm thinking, why, 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 why can't you find people with an alternative view? Yeah, they, they won't show. It's like forbidden. It is forbidden. Speak about it. You must obey. You must stay in your lane. Put up and shut up. If you do that, you can get more of the same. It's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Okay. Now, uh, there was talks about uh, bringing the army in, uh, old Tommy Atkins. Yeah. And in terms of like a possibility, uh, as I said, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea at all because I don't think the army is woke enough at this moment in time. Yeah. One of the things about insurgencies and stuff like that, especially insurgencies, is you've got to win the hearts and minds. And our government at this moment in time has not been winning the hearts and minds of the people. They wholly and totally disregard what, what they say. Yeah. Unless, of course, you say the right things. You know, we are stepping into Orwellian territory now. Yeah. If you remember in uh, 1984, uh, Newspeak, yeah, it was impossible to say that Big Brother was bad. It was grammatically impossible. They made it so. And this is the same situation. It's impossible to say that there are too many immigrants in the country, or it's impossible to say that immigrants have caused some problems in the country. You can't say that now. This is virtually tantamount illegal. Yeah, it's football. Yeah. <sighs> you know, what I used to say to my um, children, money is confidence. Yeah, money is confidence. And I used to try and explain to them that when the confidence goes away, so does the value of money. Now, what am I talking about? <laughs> You're probably saying, well, what I'm saying is this, yeah? 
we toe the line. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out and extend it a little bit further for you to think about. Okay. Why do you obey the law? Think about that. Why do you obey the law? Now, this was a question, Politics 101. Uh, it was a question put to me in my first year of my degree. I remember it very well because it was at a seminar on a Friday afternoon. I only had two uh, uh, lessons that they had. One lecture, 10 o'clock in the morning, and then right for some reason, on Friday afternoon, late, last you know, thing of the day, we had a seminar. Yeah, so obviously... I've gone from my lecture in the morning to the student bar, had quite a few drinks, and then attended this seminar. Why do we obey the law? And it came for some interesting conversation and discussion. And all sorts of reasons and answers. I mean, I ask you, I mean, maybe put write down three, three reasons. Why do you obey the law? And classic answers are because you don't want to get punished. Yeah, you don't want to get punished. Yeah. And obviously, you know, uh, you know, the crime, the, the punishments fit the crime, etc. And th there's that element to it. Yeah. You, you, know, you don't, you know, but that's not really why you obey the law. The other thing is, you know, Rousseau, I believe, said uh, that man is born free, but everywhere he is filled, you know, got chains. Yeah. Because you're, you know, we obey laws, laws which we had no part in, laws which were made decades, centuries before we were even born. But we, we toe the line with those laws. The laws shape our culture. They shape our culture. Okay, so very important how these laws are implemented. Okay, so why do we obey the law? Well, people say. If we don't obey the law, look what's happening now on the streets. There's anarchy in the UK. And that's a very good reason. Because at the end of the day, yeah, if we don't obey the, yeah, the, the main principal reason, and this was the, the, the discussion, this was the conclusion of this seminar, which I went on to, and give me the pause for four. But the main reason why we, as citizens, obey the law is because it's in our interest to do so. Think about it. It's in our interest to do so. Collectively, it's in our interest to obey the law. The moment some sort of paradigm shift happens and people feel that it's not in our interest to obey the law, then things get out of kelter. They get out of kelter, yeah, as what we're seeing now on the street. People feel that you know, they've tried to do one thing about the immigration situation. People have been, you know, suffered. There's been high body counts. Yeah. People have been murdered. Yeah. And they've taken it and they've listened to uh, the gaslighting, the mental health issue of the assailants, for example. Uh, and, but it's like, it's one too many. And we know that if there weren't the riots and stuff like that, this whole thing about what's happened in Southport probably be buried, as I said by the Olympics and the next shiny object. Or maybe maybe they might announce about this woman in Ipswich who's been killed, but I don't know. Yeah? Um, the, the issue is this. The moment people feel that the law doesn't serve them, that's when it becomes a problem. Now, obviously, collectively, you can't have people saying, I don't want to drive on the on the right, uh, the left hand side of the road, yeah, it's this is going to be disastrous, yeah. Collectively, everyone starts thinking that way over time. That's what's going to happen. Now, we're in a situation at the moment where the jails are full, supposedly. Uh, when people are going to get on probation and stuff like that, remand, whatever. Their sentence is usually cut to 50%. Now they're talking about cutting it to 40%. You do 40% of the sentence. Yeah. Because they're trying to get, they're trying to declutter the, the prisons. Okay. So what am I talking about? What is that in relation to money and confidence? Simple. Look at what Gandhi did as he overthrew the British Raj. 
he worked out that the population of India is substantially bigger than all the jails that there were in India. And so through public uh, I don't know, disobedience and discord, etc., he had worked out that you can't arrest everybody. You cannot arrest everybody. And that's the fallacy about calling everybody far right. Because you're going to get to a certain level where all the jails are going to be full. Then what? Then what are you going to do? You're going to keep on putting in and stamping on, calling people far right, uh, sort of telling them to stay in their lane. Yeah, it's you got at some point you've got to sit down people have got to sit down and listen with open mind the issues you've got to listen to the issues right that that's what that's what's important it's not just a simple case of that film they live where it's like obey 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 yeah you've got to sit down and you've got to listen to the issues and that that that, that is the problem at this moment in time yeah you yeah, know as Mum, old Jamaican mum used to say, "What you can't hear, you feel. Yeah, you know, what you can't hear, you feel." We just got to hope that these things and these uh, activities don't carry on. I mean, since October, people have been running the streets, flying foreign flags, shouting um, anti-Semitic slogans. Yeah, very, very disrespectful. Talking about genocide, Holocaust, from solution from the river to the sea. And a lot of uh, Jewish people have been afraid. You know how uh, Keir Starmer's talking about got to be careful, got to protect the mosques. He, he wasn't saying got to protect the uh, synagogues. Yeah. Okay. You know, the Labour has got a record. Labour, Labour has got form for anti Semitism. Yeah, so that's something else they need to think about before they start putting in the blasphemy laws. Yeah, Labour has had an issue with anti Semitism, and you know, the two tier policing seems to have a problem with anti Semitism because a lot of Jewish people have felt very uncomfortable since October of last year. Each Saturday, when lots of people have been going on demonstrations, yeah, chanting out very, very hateful slogans. Very hateful slogans, yeah? Now people begin to realise how hateful they are because it's been directed to, to different other, other uh, uh, situations, demographics or communities, whatever, yeah? The Jews have been suffering for a long time. The last thing we want, in fact, it is the last thing we want, is these current riots and demonstrations by the Enough is Enough, if you like, campaign, happening on a regular, frequent basis as what we've been having with the pro-Gaza demonstrations. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if every single Saturday, yeah, British people came out shouting, enough is enough, just like what's been happening in our streets every Saturday, yeah? I don't think that the government would be able to take that. I don't think the government would tolerate that. Fine if it's foreign, but domestically, the government isn't going to follow, follow that at all. But most importantly, you can only arrest so many people. And then when all the jails fall, then what? Then it can get even sinister. What we need to do is start listening, because if people start getting killed, you know, a friend of mine said to me, you know what will happen? Like, What's that? Said, well, you know, if a white person gets killed, blah, blah, I said, listen, if a white person was to get killed in any of these riots, the media wouldn't really cover it. It wouldn't be covered that much by the media. Yeah? It wouldn't be as issue. It's just like when you're hearing about people walking around in knives and stuff like that. What would cause a problem and a spark is if an Asian person or I want to say Asian, say maybe a Muslim chap got killed. Because at the moment, that hasn't really happened. Yeah. There hasn't been a number of Asian people being killed. No, no, nowhere near, not even 10% of the amount of people, casualties, okay, have been actual Asian deaths. Yeah. And if that was happening, that would be massively bad for the country because the press would be on it all the time. It would inflame situations up, it would inflame communities up, 
and it would really go out. So we need to nip things in the bud now. And the way you nip things in the bud is by listening and responding. Yeah? Not staying in your lane, put up and shut up. Start listening. For those who want change, for those who are not happy, you need to focus your energies not on I know, smashing up objects and your own community, but pushing for proportional representation. That's the only way you're going to get proper change because that's when your vote actually counts. You don't have the power of these lobbyists who have always got the ear to the politicians. The politicians listen to the lobbyists more times than they listen to a vote. The voter who just got a little say every once every five years, which is like diluted into everything else. Yeah. Unless you are an actual lobbyist formulating policy, your vote doesn't matter in this country. You need a private member's bill, maybe from the reform, to put up the idea of proportional representation, which should be backed, and it's the hypocrites, by the Liberal Democrats. All right. And you do that by having a referendum. For that change and the movement should be going about that change because until you get that change things stay the same until you get that change stay in your lane stay in your lane put up and shut up that's what i've got to say about it over and out